Royal Liverpool Golf Club at sunrise. A picture of calm and tranquility. This ruggedly beautiful course has been the stage for many of golf's great gladiators, with men like Bobby Jones and Tiger Woods crowned champions over the High Lake links. In July, the club will stage the Open Championship, when the world's best current players will face an examination shaped by the club's head greenkeeper, as they try their hand in the game's oldest and most revered major championship. Craig Gillam has been in charge at Royal Liverpool for nine years, and was at the helm when the Open was last staged here in the swelteringly hot summer of 2006. I think it's massive, you know, any, any big links golf course in the country that's got the history of a club like this, always wanted the championship back. There's a lot more pressures now to have your golf course in a condition that golf courses weren't in 20, 30 years ago. Progress is, is really, it's manicure. It is basically for a major championship nowadays, it's all about manicuring. Um, what you're seeing there just now is pretty much what the pros will see. Apart from the, the definition will be a bit stronger, the rough, the rough will be up um, through the summer months, and hopefully a little bit browner. Uh, but, but again, that's in the hands of nature. You know, this was the colour of the golf course for the, the ladies open in 2012, and you know, there was just no chance we could ever create a Lynx golf course that year. You really just pray <laughs> that everything's going to fall into place. We would love it to be maybe not quite as dry as 2006. Probably the week before the championship in 2006, we were probably in a happier place. During the championship 2006, there was the, the, the parameters were stretched. You know, the greens were going from 10 and a half foot in the stint meter in the morning to 13 foot in the afternoon, just on practice days. And trying to control that, even God can't control that one. We've got our own. 10 guys, including myself. I'm pretty hands-on as well. I'm not an office sort of guy yet. I've not quite reached that stage in my life yet. I like to be on the golf course every day knowing what's going on. I would hate the thought that a member would come along and say, oh, by the way, did you see such? And I'm like, no, I've been hiding in my office for four weeks. I don't know what's going on out there. I'd feel I'd be cheating the club at that point. The r &A, we came to an agreement a couple of years ago to all share our staff. Uh, we'd, all the championship venues would send a man down. Um, so we, we end up running with about 20 guys two weeks out and then on the, the week of the championship, we're, for this year, we're up to 40 staff. It's full on, it's um, two hours of mayhem in the morning. Because it's amazing how the competition has evolved over the last sort of five years. It's even, even from 2006, you know, we cut most things at night time and we only get uh, left to the actual main play areas for the morning. After the championship 2006, the club were pretty happy with the outcome. You know, the first time the championship had been here since the 60s. There was an awful lot of apprehension and, and things like that. And it was obviously a worry that the golf course would, would not stand up to modern golf. And obviously its length plays a big part. You know, it's a, it's a beastie of a golf course, especially when the wind blows, which unfortunately the, the professionals never really got to experience. The architect was commissioned after the, the last open by the club thinking that how could we make the golf course even stronger? The question that was put to him was, can you make it more difficult for the professional golfer, but probably be a little more generous to the, the member? Now, Jesus, that's a hard task for anybody to do. So he came in and he had a look around. We didn't want to change holes. We just wanted to tweak the golf course a little bit. So on examples like the hole down here at um, Ch Championship 8 there, it used to be quite flat off the, off the side of the green. In a, in a prime location for a pin position. So if the guys missed the green there, it was nothing. You know, it was just a simple put on the green for these guys or a, a chip. So we created a, a sort of drop off the side of the green that maybe drops about two and a half, three foot. And the idea is there that we'll put doubt in these guys' head. You know, for a, for a club member, most of it's just putt. Simple as that, we get back on the green and take our medicine. The, the pros, we've created these runoffs on half a dozen greens now where, you know, it doesn't look difficult, but for these guys, they don't want to put them off the green, they want to chip the ball to the hole. So now it looks like, well, if the greens are nice and firm and fast, we just want to put doubt in their heads. We want to see, not necessarily the guy duff it, but we want to see the guy think, damn, I've played the wrong shot, I should have played that shot. And there's been a, a little bit of length added as well. You know, we, we created a little bit of length on Championship 8. Uh, couldn't really do much up here because we're on our limit on some of the holes. 
Uh, and again, as you come down this coast here, in the par three, the, 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 the 13th here, we've again squeezed the bunker in a little bit. Never really done much change to it since then, because it's a great hole anyway. We had, we had no reason to um, change them too much. A little swale to the, the sort of right-hand, back right-hand side of the green there. Just again, for the, the shot that goes through the green, just gives that element of doubt. You know, before it was just run up to the rough edge and that was that. The winter time has been reasonably mild for the first time in eight or nine winters I've been here. The, the golf course has held up pretty well. Probably one downside was because it's been so mild, we've had a lot more golf than normal, so a little bit more wear and tear. But nothing again that's going to affect the championship. You know, that'll all recover through a nice warm, mild spring. Uh, and we're, 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 we're in a, a happy place at the moment. But again, as I've said, nature, nature's nature. It could all change drastically through June and July. <laughs>